sorry, I just caught a glimpse of this. Acknowledge this man, <laughs> Mr. WrestleMania himself, <laughs> the professor. <laughs> Acknowledge Jason Jones. Oh, hit, hit the, no, I, 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 I got you, Jay. Acknowledge me. You look like you had a one. You look like you're still having fun. Uh, yeah. Two, it, Jay, Jason's got about $700 worth of WWE toys <laughs> over his shoulders right now. <laughs> um, You look like you had a blast, man. How was WrestleMania? Oh, I had it, it was from Thursday all the way till I left after night two of Mania. Had a ball, mm. no media oh, stuff, stuff not media. What well, I did, what four nights of wrestling and or four shows in three days. So mm. the the WrestleMania event aside, which was huge, mm. Jay, I think it's fair to say this is the biggest three day stretch, probably in the history of professional wrestling. With oh, the yeah. Of, and, the, and the sale and all that. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah it, it was a, it was a, it was everything they said it would be, and then some. I mean, watching the main event from the floor, and like seeing the reaction on night two when Cody didn't win. Mm. I mean, the energy left that building so quick because so everyone they were, ready, they were ready for Cody to win it, huh? Yeah. And then they, you know, and then they had like his wife front. I mean, every yeah. it, <laughs> that was the, the biggest baby, story. the mom, like everybody was there in the front it row. Was like I remember someone saying, "Oh, his wife and his mom is down there. Oh, he's he's going over tonight." Mm. So for it to not happen, it was just like. <gasps> but I mean, it was a. Uh, I mean, I do it. I did NXT. I did the Hall of Fame. I did Stand and Deliver. I did the Undertaker's uh, one man show. I did Wale Mania and both nights of Mania. What exactly is Wale Mania? I always hear about. It. I want to go, but I it's, don't. I don't know. Is it a concert or? It's not really a concert. It's kind of like just like a, like what they did this year. They had an interview with the Usos. Hmm. So it was like Solo stayed in you know character, but then like Jay and Jimmy were talking about just the whole past year, and they really weren't in character. So they're talking about how much they really love Sammy and how mm-hmm. how for for months, how crazy it was, because they said there's times where Sammy's not trying to be funny. And they would go live on SmackDown and Jay's like, I'm cracking up because Sammy's making me laugh and I'm supposed to be serious and we're live, but I'm laughing because mm-hmm. he said Sammy is just Sammy and he's funny. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they talked about that type of stuff. They had some real cool moments there. I mean, like Wale did like a bit this, that, and a few of his songs at the end. He had like some, like like one of his young artists out there for a little bit. Hit Row did like a little thing together. They had all the the, the four, the W, the all four of them were together. Hmm. Samoa Joe was rapping along Jay Z. Oh Lord, <laughs> Samoa Joe. Bob Van Dam wow. was smoking weed on stage. Oh, this oh all checks God. out. This all I checks mean, out. Yeah, it was. It was. It was a good time. Cause, you know, because because Wale came out and said this is not a concert. Then he starts performing. <laughs> you know, it was. You know, it wasn't. You know, he brought Jade Car Cargill out for Fla- Lotus Flowers. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, it was it, it was a cool event. I mean, considering the ticket was only like twenty bucks, it wasn't like it's like you know. So I didn't know what to expect. Where it, was it? It was at a uh, Novo. It used to be called with the Microsoft Center. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so it was right there at LA Live, the same place where the Undertaker did his thing at. How was that? It was. I, I enjoyed it because I'm not used to seeing lighthearted Undertaker. <laughs> Like just yeah. relax, because even the stuff they do, like with those A A and E biographies or whatever, he's still kind of serious. Mm-hmm. This was like a lighthearted version, you know, Mark Ca- you know, Mark Calloway, hmm. just telling stories, and you know, it was it, it was my first time since I saw what Chris Rock, where I did you know lock up my phone during the show. Yeah, you know, but it I mean, I really I enjoyed because I enjoyed everything I did that weekend. Even the media sessions were fun. Like they do a good job of having the talent, you know, we're kind of ready to have fun. And it's, it's weird. It's a different type of media thing because you got people there who were like talking to them, like they're in character still, like, you know, 
are you angry at Judgment Day? And it's like, you know, and I was getting different content because I was just talking to him about, you know, regular stuff. Mm. And it was like, oh, okay, he gets it. He gets where, like, people and not just these characters all the time. So, like, talk, I talked to Rhea for a while and pretty much everybody, you know, Carmelo Hayes get, gave me the Soul Brother handshake. It was like it was like the Key and Peel like sketch. It was like, hey, oh hey, what's up, man? And we're talking, about, <laughs> and we're talking about music. And I'm like, I know he he had like a bad boy hat on, and the, I'm like, man, what you know about that? Because <laughs> he's in his 20s, and he was like, you know, I like older stuff. And he was like, when I, he said, looking back at those days, back in those 90s, everybody was grinding, like everybody was hustling back then. I like that. I'm like, I like him. I said, I said, they, I hope they put the belt on you tomorrow. I said, it's time you they put the belt on you. He was like, yeah, I got to watch that match for ringside, mm-hmm. sitting behind Nikita uh, Nikita Lions. Oh, shout out to Nikita Lions. Yeah, so I was just, I was a kid, you know, kid, you know, kid in the candy store type thing. I was just like, there, I'm here working, but this is like, you know, I talked to like, I talked to Johnny Gargano after his match with Grayson Waller. You know, and then like y'all know me. I know I know I'm not a like a, a little guy. I was surprised how much bigger I was than some of the guys. I was like, man, <laughs> I was like, you know, this is crazy. But it was like I said, it I had a I had a blast out there. Like I told somebody asked me, Well, are you mad that or, or do you wish you were with the Kings right now? I'm like, I take WrestleMania 10 times over out of 10 over a Kings playoff game. Speak for yourself. Oh, okay. I've, been, I've been to a King playoff game before. That's... It was a long time ago, but I've been to one. I've been to NBA Finals games. I've been to Major League Baseball, All-Star, NFL. All, I mean, I'll take WrestleMania over the NBA playoffs any day of the week. Hmm. Are you going to Philly real quick? Uh, hmm. I want to now. I hadn't thought about it really, but now I'm like, how can I miss Mania again? Oh wow. Do you think the business do you think the business is about to change? Or I shouldn't say the business like the wrestling business. Do you think the WWE business is about to change? Depends on how much they let Vince McMahon back in. Oh, Crazy. he's in. Like he is in in. I'm just like that's my only it's like okay, what are we I'm like are we going to start getting random giants again all the time and you know, it's, he had Brock versus Omos. Like that's Vince McMahon. <laughs> that had Vince McMahon's fingerprints all yeah. over it. And I thought that one came off pretty well. I, yeah, I, it was what it was supposed to be. Like yeah, I wasn't disappointed in that. But then you yeah. know, I'm just like, I'm on you. But you've been on a hot, the reason why it's been on the hot streak it's been on is because you know, quite honestly, you know, it's it's been fresh, and yep. that goes to NXT too. It wasn't you know. You know, for years, even though you enjoyed the product, you knew it was happening. Like, okay, this happens, and you know, very rarely did it feel like you got that, those 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 surprises. And like, even like last night, Raw just seemed weird. Like, you could tell like there was some type of shift. Mm-hmm. It was like, like why is Triple H out here saying what he said last night in the press conference? Mm-hmm. You know, and then you know, you could kind of feel like, okay, this is you know, it's a little different again. So, you know, you, I, I just hope it doesn't get so wacky to where it's like, oh, man, we're back to here we go. You know, here we go again. You know, but, did you, you see know. Vince McMahon's hair, eyebrows and mustache in person? I did not. I wish I had <laughs> one of my favorite IG accounts. Who's going wild is having a ball with this. They yes. put my man on the uh, hot salt with the, with the uh, tapatia <laughs> hot salt bottle. They didn't put the whole little outfit on him. On the, I mean that I, that that account he looks lost, ridiculous. That account has lost its mind. Like, where is this fool from? <laughs> they, I, I was like, as then I see, you know, sponsored by Just for Men. I'm like, I get it, Vince, but come on, what are you doing? <laughs> but yeah, it was. Yeah, I, yeah. They, uh, Vince was not thinking when we talked to Shawn Michaels. That was Thursday. He hadn't even seen Vince yet. A lot of people just hadn't seen him. Like they heard, they knew he was around, but no one had seen him yet. But I guess they saw him on Monday. Yeah, they saw him. <laughs> they saw him all right. The world saw him. Um, and the world saw the Sacramento Kings clinch a playoff spot last week. Since yeah. the last time we talked, the Kings have clinched a playoff spot, Jason. Real talk. Did you, and, and there's no writer, did you ever think this was going to happen again? 
I thought it, I, I just figured the law of averages said one day would happen again. I didn't know when, but I said eventually they have to get in right because everyone gets in at some point. Like it's kind of, I mean, the fact they went this long is kind of just a, it's crazy because it's almost like it's almost like you have to own, do this on purpose to not to go that long without making the playoffs. Because hmm. I mean, like you know, you know, half the league makes the playoffs. And then when they expanded with the play in, it's like two thirds of the league has a chance to make the playoffs. Mm. And so, I mean, I figured something like I said, even even a team that's had this much bad, bad drafting, bad decisions has to get lucky eventually and get a guy who can kind of elevate them at least to an eight spot. So mm. I didn't I, I didn't know when it would happen. I figured it would one day. And so one day is here. The, the crazy thing about the drought that always, you know, has me scratching my head and shaking my head is they were never, ever really close. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you know, they, they never had like heartbreak on the last day of the season, like the, the 94, 95 season where they lost on the last day of the season and didn't make the play. They never even had those moments. It was just like with two weeks to go, they were officially mm-hmm. eliminated. Or we'd have the, or we'd have like the last couple of like, like Luke's last year, where it was like, if they win every game, yep. Least, it was like, and it was San always, Antonio, biggest game in the history of the Golden One Center. Yeah, it was always like, well, if they do all of the, because I mean, you know, because even the 2018-19 year, because they finished ninth, but they weren't close. They were like nine, ten games out of eight. Mm. So it was like really Luke got them the closest, but even then it was like oh, they're not going to get in because they, they were like they they start playing better once the Aaron got hurt and like the defense would get better. You know, it was just it was just weird stuff. And then they you know they they're playing teams who also have nothing to play for and whatever reason the Kings would get all this pride like we ain't tanking. It's like all right, so you're still going to the lottery, but you know good for you you. You beat, you know, you beat this team March 31st. Yay. You know, it was just kind of like, huh. So, yeah, they were never really close to ever getting in. Then even when the bubble was like, this is the, the, the big game, you know, they mm-hmm. go out there and get smashed first night in the bubble. Next game, smashed. <laughs> that was, that was, it was like It was like. It was <laughs> over before it even started in the bubble. That was tough. Actually, the, no, the first one. Was a close one to San Antonio, who San everybody Antonio. thought they, they could was going to beat. Yeah, and they lost a close one. De'Aaron goes off, and then I think they just got the brakes beat off them by the Magic. Yeah, like, that was the one. Orlando, yeah, the Magic smashed them. You know, yes. Superman <laughs> punt, spear. The <laughs> thing was, I was like, oh my god, this is really bad. Then when they played the Pelicans, and I was like, I said, oh, this is just not good. I'm like, they're not ready. I'm like, they're so not ready. It was, and poor Bogey was looking around like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> he was Bogey had a – it was Dallas. Bogey was the one that had – he was one of 14 and in overtime point, lost to Dallas. At that point, I didn't care. I, I gave Bogey his props. I didn't care. He gets all the like, props in the world, but damn, one of 14. And I the one they, he made was an overtime. I, I think they broke his spirit. They took oh, his smile. Goodness. They took Bogey's Thank smile. But I think I think even if they don't make the playoffs, Bogey lives in Atlanta now, and he's getting paid. I and think he's he, getting paid. <laughs> that is wild. Yeah, that, I think I think things worked out okay for him. Yeah, he's good. He's good. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's a, that, the the bubble cost Flade his job. It did. Yeah, Flade yeah. still be in charge. Think about that for a second. If the bubble hadn't happened, Flade might still be in charge. Almost definitely would still be in charge right yeah. now. Yeah, the bubble, and I and it was crazy. Hey, Ivy would be a king. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was. I thought it was kind of unfair. I thought it was unfair to judge. You know, I'm like, if you're going to fire him, you could have been fired him. Why give him an extension? And then because it doesn't work out in the most weird season we've ever had. Like, oh, I've seen enough. It's like, really? And I guess part of it was too for me. I never thought those teams were that good to where. I mean, if you're going to fire him off of the performance in the bubble, you could have fired him a year earlier because it wasn't like the team was all that different. Mm-hmm. So it was just one of, you know, it was like, we're going to fire you, but we're still going to pay you. It was, you know, don't worry. 
It w- remember, no, remember, he didn't get fired. It was that weird, like, you know, we're moving. They didn't want to say fired. It was just weird. Yeah. He, the got, the, days, right? he got the equivalent of a WWE Legends contract. <laughs> <laughs> he, he got one of those to to show up at games court side and to sign autographs. That's what Vlade got. He's a brand ambassador. Yeah, <laughs> which is oddly and funny. He's the Iron Sheik. Remember when he was oh, brought back insane. initially? That's what he was supposed to be doing. Remember? Yeah, like, I mean, he's not here to run stuff. Like a week later, he's running stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I don't, are there any more? I don't think there are any other former kings out there they're going to hire to like you know shadow Monty anytime soon. So I think it should be a little bit of stability right now. No, I think the one former king, the two former kings we got in place are in perfect positions right here with DC and, mm-hmm. and Bobby. Mm-hmm. How you feel about the uh, about the team going into the playoffs? Obviously, they lost that game on Sunday to the Spurs. Uh, is that Which concerning? Jason may not even know about yeah, it yeah, until Jason, this Jason exact no moment. <laughs> Jason, I, heard, I mean, I knew about it. I didn't. He's care. still basking <laughs> in the glory of WrestleMania. I, mean, I knew about it. I, I ain't gonna lie and say I cared, but I he knew was about it. Bianca Belair. He, he could care less. About yeah, it. The Kings giving I up mean, Yeah, for me, with them going in, it just depends on who they draw. The matchup, and the, right now, the matchup could be anybody. Right. It could be is there a favorable one. Is there one that you think is favorable to them? Favorable to me of the teams in the bunch right now. I would kind of say the Clippers because they're the ones struggling the most right now. Yeah. And, they, and they've had success against them. I think that's probably the most favorable. Second person to say that today. Yeah. I just don't I, – I, I don't think they want to deal with the size of the Lakers or a Minnesota, and I don't think you want to deal with a Steph. I just think if – the way – I mean, as of what today, was it April 4th? <laughs> you know, because remember, a week ago, I wouldn't have said the Clippers because I thought the Clippers were going to be, you know, four or five. Mm-hmm. But Clippers could be eight by, you know, by Wednesday. They could. You know, so I mean, this could this thing this thing, this thing is going to change up a lot in the next couple of days. But I, I think if they can get a team that prefers to play small, that's to their advantage. You know, I don't think they want to they don't want to deal with AD Vanderbilt LeBron front line or a uh, Gobert. You know, Gobert trying to smother Sabonis. I don't I don't think you you want if you had your preference you want you know and also with the Clippers, you don't know what Paul George is going to be in a week or two. Hmm. So I think that, you know, if you're just looking around, they're the most beat up of the bunch, you know. And so, they, they, I mean, you did give up 175 to them, but you scored 176. And you, like I said, they've had success against the Clippers. Mm-hmm. I just and I just think of all the teams that are in that bunch, if you had to pick one, that's the team you pick. But I don't know if the Clippers are going to hang around and, and stay in that spot. I think it's like 302 to 300 is – the score of the last two, yeah. the last two <laughs> Clippers Kings games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, uh, there's a. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen with any of those teams, right? Like it's the game on Wednesday between the Clippers and the Lakers. That's a big. That's one. the one. Yeah. Um, Golden State, they have everything in front of them. Like if they went out, mm-hmm. they'll at least be six or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. But they got OKC um, tonight, which is is going to be an interesting game. That's at home, but mm-hmm. you got. Uh, the Kings on Friday. Uh, I'm gonna dismiss. And that's Gordon. their next game. Yeah, their next game is Friday. Yeah, so they'll be nice and rested. Wow. Yeah, and you know, I guess the Lakers have a back to back, and they hadn't been playing AD in back to backs. But I think Lakers play Wednesday, Thursday. They play tonight, 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 tonight Wednesday. Wednesday. They play. They play Utah tonight, and the Clippers yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. So I think if if there's a if there's a back to back, AD is going to play, and it's going to be this one. You know, so I just think it's it's all coming to, and it's it's all you know. AD's played in what twenty five of the last twenty seven, and both of the games he's missed were planned rest. So I think he's feeling good. I mean, he's been killed. I mean, the way he's rolling right now, I wouldn't want to get a hot team in the playoffs. And right now, the Lakers are the the Lakers are the hot team. Even though Minnesota lost, they had been playing relatively well for a while. And yeah, even with the Kings, I mean, the Kings losing it's to the Spurs, it's the same thing. You let teams shoot 50% and give up 130 points. Hey. 
it, you know, anybody's got a chance. You know, like I said, the way they play defense, anyone's got a chance against them. Yeah. And it's just kind of, I mean, you know, they're they're winning the way they have to win. They have to play the way they play to win. But, you know, I'm, a, a lot of folks tell me, well, no one plays defense. That's not true. Teams play defense. The Kings just play it worse than everybody. I mean, if you watch the games, teams are playing defense. If you throw out the numbers, and a lot of times I don't get, I try not to get too wrapped up in, well, the numbers of it, where they rank. Just watch a game. Teams are trying to play defense. And people keep telling me, oh, it doesn't matter because no one plays. Someone's going to play defense in the playoffs. Teams are playing it now. I, I just I just can't, like I said, unless they draw the Clippers, I just can't see that defense holding up right now. Just can't, I just can't envision them holding Anthony Edwards in check for six, seven games. Well, someone has to. Uh, they they, they, they going to be a 9 10 seed. They ain't even, they ain't even going to see the Kings. Yeah, it, I don't know. Lose to the Blazers. <laughs> yeah. That's a like I said, I can't keep up with who's all tumbling right now. I can't keep up. But I, I know I, I I would not, like I said, for them, I think they got to play the Clippers. I can't see them being favored against anybody else, even as a three. They won't be favored against yeah, the Clippers. But they won't they won't be favored against I don't think they'll be favored against anyone. I don't think so the either. Like, not maybe maybe, maybe New happens. Orleans, but nobody nobody gonna favor the Kings. Yeah, they're not gonna be favored against anybody. And I'm not a big I'm not a big Vegas guy, but I did see the tweet that the top six teams in the West that like according to Vegas were like everyone but the Kings. It was like the Lakers, the Clippers, Phoenix, Denver, Memphis, and somebody else. Vegas had what was that? Uh, the odds to win the title? Yeah, they had Dallas ahead of the Kings. <laughs> <laughs> Dallas I mean, what are we 11. doing? Yeah, that's the reason why I don't pay attention. See, because that's just that's just does Dallas even <laughs> want to play basketball right now? I mean, I don't know if they do. I mean, I mean that's just, talking about how much he misses Jalen Brunson. <laughs> I mean, it was just crazy because when that trade happened, there's a scout I know who texted me. He said it's going to be fun watching that thing fall to get fall apart in Dallas, hmm. and I was like, "Really?" He's like, he said, "That's not going to." He said, "It's not going to be good." He said, "It's just not." Well, it is fun to watch. I enjoy yeah. it. I guess you're like, "Hey, at least it ain't you, right?" Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and like, and, oh, and at least it is the Mavericks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the they could go from the conference finals to the lottery. Yeah, and to be honest with you. It's probably what they should do. <laughs> like they really probably should sit Luca and, and Kyrie at this point. You got to protect that pick. But I mean, they, they haven't said anything. They don't play tonight. So, mm -hmm. like, if 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 there's any you know truth to that report or rumor, we won't find out till tomorrow. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's just, just, you got to protect that's that. Just pick. Crazy. It's like you make the trade because you're all in. You're like, you know what? Yeah. And the thing is, they're not even high in the lottery. And that's the, the whole problem with it. It's like, unless you get some some real great fortune, where's the difference? It's gonna be the, the pick ain't gonna be that big of big difference in terms of uh the number, unless you're just saying, well, it's easier to trade the 12th mm -hmm. pick as opposed to the 15th pick. But well, even the, then, the thing, Jay, is they lose the pick. It's top 10 protected. Oh, so if they're 11 or 12, they lose the pick to the Knicks. Like you got to protect that pick. <laughs> Oh, that guy, this is a mess. See, I, I, I've been so engulfed in Roman Reigns and Cody, I didn't even care about their pick. I mean, it, that's, a, that's a mess right there. They they could be, <laughs> you missed the playoffs. I missed the playoffs, oh. you lose your first round pick. Yeah, and then, and then you still have to re-sign Kyrie. Right. And yeah. for them, they almost have to because if you, if you, you know, because you can't lose them for nothing. And it's I think they put them right back here where they are. They're gonna give them the max. They're gonna be right back <laughs> here next year. The, 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 the assumption is the, the assumption was well, Kyrie's headed to the Lakers. Why would the Lakers want to jack up their you know jack up their roster and commit you know? And then from what, what the reports are true, what held up the trade to the Lakers in part was that the Lakers were like, we're not giving you four years. Mm -hmm. We'll match you up with LeBron. We'll give you two, but we're not giving you no. <laughs> Mm. You know, so I, I guess I, I just wonder after this thing falls apart and like what happens with Kyrie? Like, what do you, you know, because you, you can resign him 
And then, you know, do you sign and trade him? Who wants to do a sign and trade for Kyrie? Yeah, I mean, there. This, this is, I mean, you know, hey, this is going to be a, an interesting thing in Dallas because I know people have, like, people have told me when this thing doesn't work, they just want to hear what Luca says in the offseason. They're, wait, they're waiting for Luca to come out and just say, I got to get out of here. This is terrible. That's, that might be the best thing that yeah, happens. Or to Dallas. Dallas needs to say, we need to get him out of here. Yeah. If, if, if Luca goes and does that, Dallas just got let off the hook. Oh, well, he do not want to be here. Oh, God bless it. We got to work it out. Let's yeah. You know, because I mean, you've not think about it between the uh, Kyrie trade and the Porzingis trade. Look at all the depth they gave up to bring those two guys in. And what do you have to show for it? Nothing. Kyrie Irving and missing the playoffs. Mm. I mean, mm. you know, you, yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, you know, you might, be better actually, off. you might be better off if you can trade Luca and sign Kyrie. Oof. Oh, that, that I don't be, think this is the off season to trade Luca, but he got to, it's like a boxer getting beat up. You gotta show, yeah, show me, me something. something. <laughs> you gotta show me something next year, or else I'm gonna start looking at you as the problem. Hands up, Luca. <laughs> now, like I said they were just in the conference finals a year ago, so it's like, what is going on? You know, I mean, yeah, people. Are, I mean, people are looking at Luca a little different. They missed the playoffs. Hmm. They're gonna look on him a little different. But then again, he'll have the built-in the thing of well, you no, know, the Ky- Kyrie will get an inordinate amount of blame for what happens, mm-hmm. as if he was there all year. No, uh, you know, it wasn't Luca who signed JaVale McGee and then never played him <laughs> no. for what for some random. I don't know what's going on. I don't pretend to know what's going on in Dallas. I'm just out here watching going. Wow. That's what we're all doing, Jay. We appreciate <laughs> you. It was fun watching your watching your journey this weekend, man. I'm yeah, I'm, man. I'm 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 envious, but it was it was it was, it was fun to watch. <laughs> we appreciate you. We appreciate you as always. And I'm and I'm guessing you were you were good with Sunday night's outcome. I knew that was what it was going to be. I said okay. they can't they can't destroy the entire bloodline in one, yeah. in one weekend. And that's why I asked the question in the press conference. Since Roman said we're in the third inning, <laughs> he yeah. said we got so much more to go with this. He said, I'm like, yeah, I, I was I was the one in the presser asking like real questions. I wasn't like, hey, so Roman, now that you've conquered Cody. <laughs> like, <laughs> like what's next i don't know let me go ask triple h what's next i don't know but yeah hey, jay but before you go i want to hear what you said i think i think seth should win it at SummerSlam. seth yeah i think so I, I think maybe the, the move is he, he he only defends one of the belts and he loses one of them. That's the other thing. They got to get one of the straps off. Well, I don't I, think they do. I think having one is you, you should only have one belt. You shouldn't have two. There isn't mm-hmm. even a brand. Roman was on Raw last night. <laughs> there isn't well, even guess, this isn't even a thing anymore. Yeah, I guess he can be on Raw. He has both belts. They changed the oh, color. That's, that's, they that's, changed the color. There isn't even a raw colored brand uh, belt no more. They just need to make one. No, because remember, yeah, because the the universal one became the blue one. So the red one became like obsolete because I guess after the draft, the the red belt ended up on SmackDown, so the red belt had to become blue, and I prefer blue over red anyway. So damn. Okay. All, All right. Damn. All right, Jay. We're gonna let you go before we before we get ourselves in any trouble. We, All right. The chosen one. We appreciate you. Uh, thanks, you know. Jason.